G'day everybody. Um, I had a couple people ask me how I rebuilt my SX Mini Pod, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, this one I have already pulled apart, so it'll look a little bit easier than what it actually is like. But nevertheless, uh, it's essentially the same. But might be a little bit tricky. Now this you can do for I'd say this video would help for a lot of different maybe other pods out there but not all of them will be obviously the same as this but you can use some of the things I'll show you in this video to do with other things so um, you can always skip bits and find the bits you want uh, just quickly keep you interested my next video I'll be rebuilding a Crown 3 coil. Um, now what you'll see in that can be used for most sub ohm tank coils. Essentially they're all similar so I'll show you how to do that and <coughs> excuse me. Nevertheless let's get started so this is the coil well, the pod, and take the lid off, unscrew. Sorry if the autofocus is a bit slow, I'm on my phone with an external camera, so it's just better than my normal phone. So you want to get your ceramic tweezers and pull out these pins. You can either use ceramic tweezers or a screwdriver, and you can see there. If the focus goes on, those two little holes. Sorry about the focus. Come on. Okay. Ah, oh, doesn't like it. Well, there's those those two holes there. You want to get in there. If it can with a screwdriver. See this one's a little bit too big, so I'll use the end of the ceramic tweezers to get in there and kind of lift it up. So you get in. Sorry. And just kind of jiggle it up and it falls out. Same on this side. Should put it on manual focus, but I don't know how to adjust the manual focus all the time. Now stay focused like that. Nah, doesn't like me. All right, you'll get the point here. Put it under. Kind of pry it up. Get your two contacts out. Now from here, let's see if I can lift that up a little bit might help a little bit I'm not sure all right now on the side of the pod there's these two notches so you might damage it a little bit like I have on mine but it doesn't do anything else like it does it doesn't affect the way it works so what I did was I first get in that hole with a small screwdriver and kind of push it, push it in. Same on the other side. Push it in and kind of wiggle it up at the same time. Then you'll kind of knock those notches away. And then I go in here with the screwdriver and I twist it, get it in there. I move my screwdriver around to where that notch is there and just twist it a little bit which will cause that little bit of damage that you can see there oh, this camera's focus I'm I use it because it would be it's better than my phone but is it really <clears throat> all right and then you do the same on the other side, kind of give it a twist. And then 
put it in that hole that we pushed in before and lift lift it up, jiggle it up. Don't know if you can see that's moved up quite a lot to the other side, jiggle it up. You should be able to from the top just push in. As you can see it just fell out. Now this will be like that. It is rather hard to pull out the first time. Uh, you can take that rubber gasket off. If that's damaged, that's when you'll get leaking. But mine's not. Now what I did, I grabbed a pair of pliers, a rounded piece of tissue, put it in here, hold on. And you don't really need to twist, but you can kind of give it a twist and a pull. Because um, I've done mine, I can do it by hand now. But just use a pair of pointy nose pliers or something that you should have in your rebuilding kit if you've got one and a bit of tissue paper or something around there or a vape band just to stop it from scuffing up that and pull now because I've done mine you'll end up with a coil in there now I haven't got one in you'll need to get your tweezers or a screwdriver and pull it out so it, it won't be as easy as you think, unfortunately. It's jammed in there pretty good, but and it's ceramic, so you might have to break the ceramic to get it out, but with enough, you know, get it and wash it. Dry everything. And then you're up to this point here. So first off, once everything's done off, um, I like to make the coil. So what I use, this one is... 30 gauge, Nichrome N80. Um, I find 30 is probably the um, best resistance for a nice size coil. You could use 32. It's kind of hard with 28. 28 is a little bit too thick for the device to ramp up quickly, is what I've found. So I found 30 is kind of the sweet spot. So. We'll get your piece of wire. I'll unwrap a unwrap a length. And I like to use one of these coil winding tools for single strands. Um, you can wind it by hand on a coiling rod like this one so you can use one of those but for single strands oh, I'm gonna need that later um, I like to use one of these so this is just a coiling tool that came in a geek fake kit so I'll get this Ready? If you don't know how to use one of these, it's really simple. Put your rod in. Get your wire. There's a hole. Two holes there. One's for clockwise, one's for counterclockwise in coil wrapping. Doesn't matter which way you wind it. So I like to leave a bit of space. You want to leave some leg length on this because it doesn't matter. We can always cut it. Um, I am using a 2mm in a diameter at 7 wraps. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Perfect. That's why I like using this. Very easy. Now you want to, with the SX Mini, you want to stay around 1 ohm. Um, if you go below 1 ohm, you will, oh, the device won't fire. You can go a little bit above and it will still work. So there's an app on your phone you can get, uh, sorry, mental blank on what it's called. I think it's called Coil or Vapor. No, that's a website. 
mental blank on what it's called. I'll post a link in the description. But no, I'll post a link in the comments. But you can use that wire calculator and you basically put in your wire gauge, your wire type, so nichrome N80, 30 gauge. Um, you do how many wraps and it tell you how many ohms it's coming out to. And they're in a diameter of the coil. But I found with 2 million in a diameter, 7 wraps is um, pretty spot on. You could do 6 wraps and be closer to 1 ohm because the leg length is actually quite long. But fine like this now this is where it gets a bit ink trip I guess you'd say you've got to bend these wires nice uh, like um, I'll show you how they end up looking but so you want one of your wires which I like to use the the leading wire the wire that the the bit that was at the start of your coil and you want to kind of put a 90 degree bend in there without damaging what the coil looks like. So, uh, I've bent it a bit and I'm just straightening it out now. And then I bend it a bit more near the coil and you want it straight. This is why I use this camera, so hopefully I can get a close up. Where the hell's the lens? There we go. See the on the bottom there, it's a nice bend. Nice bend on that coil. Now we do the top one. Now, first I'll cut off a bit of this. Leave a bit quite a bit of length on there. So I like to do this on my calling rod as so it doesn't warp too much of the coil. Now this one, I like to use the about a mil of the tweezers. But also, see how they're on the... I've got to do it like this. Come on. Come on. Autofocus. This is a pain. Come on, just focus. Doesn't like me. I've got to put it on menu, I reckon. Well, where the lead is, is on the exact same side bit hard to see with the focus so crappy. Maybe I can show you in this camera, I'm not sure. No, that's even hard to see. So you want to just give it half a wrap because they're on the same side. So just give it half a wrap to bring the legs onto opposite sides of the coil. Go. Grab the tip of your tweezers. Let's see if I can. I like to use probably it's probably about two mil. Two mil there. I grab that part. Just focusing on my hand, but. And just bend it on the tweezer at a 90 degree to the coil. It might be a little too wide this one. And kind of just bend it so that lead is as straight as you can kind of get it. Doesn't matter too much, just nice and straight. Cut that. Now, hopefully, I can show you what this looks like, so you'll get the idea of all that unfocused nonsense I just did. There we go. 
that's exactly what you want. So, a little 90 degree at the top, that could be a bit straighter, and on the opposite side, you've got your other leg. It's exactly what you want. So now, because when, before we cotton this thing up, and we can't dry fire this, and it's not a spaced coil or anything, I like to pre-fire it with a burner. Um, now, also, test it to make sure that it can fit in the middle of your chimney, I guess you'll call it. So I just keep it on the coiling rod and put it in, and if that leg is too close to the side while the coil is in the middle, um, the 90 degree bend at the top has to be smaller. This is passable. It's a little bit too big in my opinion. Okay. That is probably a little bit too much. You want it a little bit less than that. So I've got one of these torches. I might use the other one actually. I've got a, I've got a couple of these torches. So grab your legs with the tweezers and you want to do it as far down as you can and the bit that you're going to cut off. And this is just a jet lighter. And you unlock it, fire it up and get that coil glowing. And that'll actually, this is a way of getting out hot spots. Do the legs, get them glowing. That side, that side. Now that, come on. Bit of pressure built up in there. So that will actually help hot spots. It'll get rid of them because it's the wires, rather than electricity, it's the heat. So there'll be no hot spots in this now. That's the kind of the old school method of doing it with mechs and stuff. Um, right, now we're ready for cotton. If it's cooled down. Yeah. So the cotton part is a little tricky. I like to put it on backwards on this, like that. I'm getting this focusing a bit better now. Sorry, I'm... Now, I like to use this style of cotton for rebuilding pods and sub-tank coils. So this is the flat Japanese organic cotton. Now you only need a really thin piece as wide as the coil. So it's not much. So I'm going to cut a nice thin strip. And that's all you need. Right. So you don't need to fluff this up or anything, that'll work just fine the way it is. If it's, um, this one's already got like the outer pad taken off it. So if you're using um, Japanese cotton, it's normally got a, a pad film kind of on the top. Like you can't, people can use it, but most people prefer to tear it off. So just tear that off. Now what I will do is split this one in half because it's a bit thick. Now, on your top lead, the one that you've bent at the 90 degree angle, you want to feed your cotton underneath that. Now once that's done, I'd like to turn it around, because it, it, it's a bit hard to do it when you're that way. So once I've got it under the, under the leg, I'll turn it around. It can be a little difficult. 
this is uh, where it gets kind of more fidgety. We're dealing with micro coils here, so. Now, with the cotton, you want it the same width the whole way around. And because um, you're underneath it, you want just enough underneath it so it doesn't short anything in there. And then pull it so there's a little bud there. Now that's hard to see. Let's see if I can. Just like that, underneath that leg that goes down. This way. There we go. Now hold that. Pull it kind of taut without pulling it through. I just almost pulled it through. Sorry if you can hear banging and stuff around. I live next to it, oval, and I think they're playing soccer. Now, wrap it around. Try to keep it the same thickness the whole time. So you pull it taut, but not taut enough to rip the cotton. I've just ripped the cotton. That's completely fine, because we have another <laughs> another part. I'm going to get the fluff off. Let's do this again. So I go through that lead that I call the top lead. Put it nice and high. Here we go. This will work better. Just like that. I showed you before. Hold one side. Pull it nice. Keep everything straight. That's the hard part. And then you, you, we just wrap it around the coil. Now this is why the Japanese cotton is easier. So you do, do it a few times, it's going to depend what cotton, but you want to do it so it's nice and snug inside that chimney. Um, you're better off with too much than not enough before you cut it, so I think that might be a little bit too much. So I cut it, put the chimney on, oh, that's perfect, and push it inside. Now it should be snug that it holds in there, you can move a wire and the coil doesn't really move. It's got to be quite snug. This I could do with a little bit more, unfortunately. But this is demonstration purposes. So as you can see, it's in there nicely. But if I can get the camera to focus properly, which is going to be the dilemma for this whole fucking video. There we go. It's not too bad. It's actually not too, as bad as I thought. It does wiggle a little bit, but you you got to have it ta tauter than that. There should be hardly any wiggle in there. Otherwise, you'll come across leaking problems. Now, to fix one of the other leaking problems that I had initially doing this, get a piece of cotton and you want to roll it up into a ball nice nice and tight and get another piece and another ball you want both little balls to be about about the same size so this is just with this is a good reason to keep some of your offcut cotton if you're building coils because it doesn't have to be there we go. Two little balls of cotton. So now there's two holes in there. I keep tilting it the wrong way. My phone's on an angle. There we go. Um, so you're going for those two holes. So line up your legs. This is why I like quite a bit of length on there. And 
and just get those legs in. And there we go, they're through. Now this is why I like the length. What you've got to do to that I found helped stop a leaking. Mine just fell off. See if it was taut enough, that wouldn't happen. So I'm actually gonna put a little bit more on there. You can. That's the thing. You can just wrap a bit more on there. And I'll keep it nice and in line. Put it back on the rod. A bit easier on the rod. Okay. Put it back in. So I am doing this in one take. So you can see little stuff ups. That doesn't matter. I'm not fast. I'm not saying I'm professional at this. I'm just saying this is how I do it. And how I succeeded with it. Both the legs in there. There we go. Okay. Now get the two balls and put them inside once you've got the legs in. So just inside that groove at the bottom. Now this will restrict the airflow a little bit, but it actually will stop any leaks happening out of the airflow. You want to keep everything nice and straight. Uh, if you saw those two balls at the bottom, they're in there. And just push straight. You don't do any twisting because you stuff the legs. There we go. And now we've got the coal installed. Bend the legs over the holes. And what I like to do is cut, put the tweezers in the hole and cut about half, so half, half that hole worth off the leg. If it focuses just like that, perfect. Then you can grab your tweezers and kind of start off the bend. Don't bend it all the way because you want to make sure that it's got contact with those metal springs. Just bend it just enough so the pins can do their job. So one pin. Two pin. Now just grab your tweezers or pliers or something and give them a good push. There we go. Nice and flush. So there we go. Cotton on that. There you can see it on the holes. There's no cotton or anything coming out the bottom. That's where the airflow holes are. That one there and that one. Let's use something to poke with. That one. And that one. Those two. They're the air holes. Okay. Now put your rubber grommet. Where did it go? There it is. You want to line it. So if you can see on the rubber grommet, it's kind of got a lip. So you want the thicker part of the lip at the bottom. And you want to just line up that groove. And that'll just sit on like that. Now this is... I guess you'd call the easy part, because we've done a lot of tricky shit. Sorry for the language. I better put a language warning. Kind of put it on there, but don't start pushing it yet. Because the grommet will... Uh, bend... So you want to kind of guide that grommet in and push at the same time, not too hard. I just I like to push with a screwdriver and just guide it in. Important bit here is the curve. And just push in, or the guide guide that grommet in. Once it's 
basically in there you can give it a shove there we go now it's quite tight still I can't pull that by hand and the grommets what seals the juice from coming out and it's above these holes so any cracking below those holes shouldn't affect performance or have any leaking problems and that's it top back on that thing's good to go fill her up and done now as long as let, let's have two cameras of me now whoa scary stuff all right so as long as the coil in there is one ohm or above it'll fire I believe 1. Point, I think it's 1.1 1. 1 with 7 wraps so if you go 6 wraps it'll probably be about 1 um, the calculator is a little bit off because of the leg length of uh, the coil on that part but as you can see it's a little bit finicky but you can take if you can do this you can do a lot all right so don't be afraid to stuff it up if you're going to use it until it's a point where you're going to throw it away and give it a shot it doesn't hurt to give it a shot because you're going to throw it away anyway and try again if you stuff it up or you break it next pod try it again and eventually you'll get it and once you get it once it gets easier and easier so next video I've got these crown 3 coils I'm going to show you how to do a rebuild on one of those now doing a crown 3 coils is a little bit better you can use Clapton wire and stuff because your device isn't going to be like oh that's below an ohm you can there's a lot more we can do with that so I can there's a pod I've got a new one in there at the moment but it fits in nicely still let's use now I haven't got juice in there but if I click it quickly don't do this because you've got a choice of uh, burning that cotton but it'll fire it wants to fire good stuff so what I like to do to test to make sure that it, it's an ohm if your calculations have been a bit wrong um, just put a tiny bit of juice in there and something if you're using mixed salts just use a standard juice um, or best thing if you've got straight PG because it's really thin it'll suck up quickly use a little bit of PG or whatever juice you've got on hand get it a tiny bit wet without filling it all the way up um, hold the bottom where the air holes are give it a suck um, give it a couple of those and then just give it a quick test see if it'll fire if it wants to fire you're good to go fill it up done Hope you like this one. Sorry I kept it. Oh, I tried to keep it short, but sorry it came a bit long. Um, sorry about the autofocus. I'm going to work on a manual focus option for this so I can stay in one spot because uh, that might be a bit easier than the camera trying to guess where I want focused. So sorry about that. Anyway, thank you from both of me.